I got laid off. I got fired. I got fired. But here's the thing. I was a binge guy. I remember seeing her at the local titty bar. I feel dirty right now just telling it into a microphone. We're broken around here. Working man sucks. Hey everybody, welcome back to the Working Class Holes Podcast. I'm your host, Ed McGowan, here in the break room with my co-host, Josh Accardo. Edward! What's up, dude? I'm in a really uh, great mood today. Yeah, you are. Because I, uh, have, I have a, a paisan here. Uh, not that you're not, but you know, you have that Irish name. It <laughs> no, really yeah, ruins yeah, yeah. it for me. Yeah, I don't know. Because uh, yeah. you're really Italian. You're a lot Italian. I'm actually more Italian than Irish, but yeah. I look oh, like yeah. a fucking... You look like a straight... Yeah, yeah that's what's kind of... A, sometimes it, we could probably be better friends if you were look more Italian. I mean, I, yeah, okay. <laughs> no, I'm joking around. I, it so would probably guy, be we would just get we'd we'd each, each other out. <laughs> beat each other up. <laughs> this guy is not only a really funny comedian, but he does uh, epitomize the Italian look, the Italian name, and the Italian brand. So I had cannolis from a local place brought in. We have our uh, espresso here for the one and only... Peter Garachi. Oh my God! Hello, sir. yo, Thank bro. You. Thanks for being. You get the pinky ring and everything, dude. I you love know what's it. Funny about this is that I never. I, I think I became a, more Italian as I got older. <laughs> <laughs> because when I was a kid, like I had long curly hair, and my thing was like, because I was one was like being young, being an actor. It's like I'm like, oh, I'm never gonna get to play like fucking gangsters and stuff. Like I'm always gonna play some like regular white kid. Yeah. And now that I'm older, I'm actually going out for stuff. Like I don't even go out for comedy. I only yeah. go out for like yeah. gangster or like, <laughs> like cop, or, Uncle like, Juniors. I like younger grew, years. Yeah, I grew like I grew into the role. Yeah, you did. You just <laughs> aged into it. I think I'm like become I'm like becoming more like my dad and my uncle as I get older. And it wasn't that way when I was a kid. I don't think I'm ever gonna become like my dad. Unless it's like uh, the mistakes I make, but more oh, so like the way he looks. <laughs> um, I want to start with what we always start with. What is your wildest day job? So, whoa, whoa, can we eat one of these cannolis real quick? Just take a quick bite together yeah. all at once. Oh, all right. Salud. Yeah, yeah. You know, little cannoli. Cheers, guys. Hey. Cheers, salute, hey. guys. Salute. I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna dip. I never dip. Let me try it. Oh yeah. Mm. That's so good. Not bad. Mm. Not bad. That's a good cannoli. Right? No napkins? Yeah. All right, forget about it. Oh, no, they're up there, but, you know, no one noticed. I, I did put the napkins on. <laughs> See? Italians always have all spread for this guy. He already knows, like, what I'm missing. It's I even because, got a little spoon for him. It's because I brought those cannolis <laughs> over. I'm like, yeah, hey, you just wipe it on your pants. What are you talking about? <laughs> so, wait, is the question worst job? No, 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 no. Craziest, wildest day job. Dude, honestly, that could be, like, three different jobs. Like, pick one and let's roll with it. We got we got we got forty minutes to fill. All right, so I, like I said, I think we'll 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 eventually circle back to restaurants. But well, because you do a lot of construction and a lot of restaurants. Well, so stuff. that's the thing is, I I got fired from a restaurant job, and it, you know you ever get fired from a job that you hate and it still makes you sad? Oh yeah, because you're oh. like oh, I'm like you're choosing you're pride. you're yeah. you're hurting me. Like I wanted to leave yeah, and you're yeah. making me leave. So I had one of those situations, and I started kind of hitting the ground running with comedy and stuff like that, and then. Um, my mom, who's <laughs> so we had a house in the, at the shore. This is how this right. is how I got into the construction. You're one of the Italians that had the shore house. So my nonno, God bless him, Bon Alma, came here and 50 years ago, you, as a, he was like laying asphalt in mm. the 50s, and he was able to buy a beach house back when guys could do Damn, that, right. you know, and have a family. What an era, right? What a working Dude, the working when, class golden age. When could, he when he died, he had his house, a condo in Florida, and the and the beach house. From laying asphalt. Well, he—I mean, he was construction. But yeah, like, yeah. That, I mean, that time but that was still—he like, wasn't making. Uh, I mean, it wasn't like he was a, a contractor yeah. working on skyscrapers. Yeah. I mean, that's what you would need. I mean, now he might have been involved that. in some other business. Hey, well, as, <laughs> far as, I know, there. as far as I know, everything was bought legitimately. Uh, <laughs> that's all uh, you need to know. As far as you know, is good enough for me. Hard work. So, so my mom just goes, "Hey, you need a day job. Why don't you build us this house?" So what happened? This this is what happened. We had a bungalow at, in Seaside Heights. I grew up um, there, and actually want to talk about that. So I worked on the boardwalk in Seaside when I was a kid. Yeah. And Seaside, for those of you that don't know, because you're in Elvis country, where there are no Jews, there are Italians. It's uh, where Jersey Shore is shot. Yeah, it's a show Jersey Shore. I grew up on that boardwalk. Like I grew, but I've been around for like thirty years that way. People have been doing what the Jersey Shore oh. kids have been doing. Oh, I was for thirty, like, forty yeah, years would, now, right? Yeah, I used to go there in high school. Get laid, get. Drunk. Oh, yeah, yeah. I used to say like I knew, I didn't know those 
people from the show, but I knew those guys. Like the legit up. ones, not one that they marketed, like the actual dudes Dude, that you, you would get. You used to go, there was a club called Temptations, and you'd go there, and dudes would have their shirts off, and they'd just be like, yo, is that guy bigger than me? And I'm like, are we, I'm like, are we here to meet girls? Like, what are we doing? Why, why are the dudes staring at the other dudes in this fucking place? It's so, I, one time, so before Jersey Shore happened, um, what's the, the, the It's now shut down But there was the big What's the big one Remember the big one That just closed oh, there was some, It was there a was restaurant karma, So Karma was yeah. a Was a sushi restaurant Before it became Karma the club Oh yeah. okay And yeah. a girl I was dating Her family Same scenario Italian girl Had a, a, a house down the shore Seaside And we were eating there And there was a guy I mean I've never seen a human being That looked like this Steroid wise he looked wow. like fucking Blaine from the Batman oh, movie. Yeah. He looked insane. Just some Italian dude with some. And the funny thing is, the girl couldn't be more like petite. Right. Like one of those blonde Italian girls, yeah. like those mouthy blondes that are like five feet, 110 pounds. Yeah. And, yeah. and this guy was a fucking animal, man. Dude, I don't know what they're doing down there. I saw a guy that he couldn't. He was so he was so loaded up on steroids he couldn't like move his arm overhand. I saw him throw a dart like yeah. this. <laughs> 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 oh, darts underhand. <laughs> he did, and he was wearing he was on twenties. <laughs> he was wearing a he was wearing a long sleeve shirt in the middle of summer because you didn't, he didn't want you to see that he was like probably covered in acne from oh, the steroids. Yeah, oh, yeah. Yeah, oh yeah, I learned all about all this stuff. Yeah, yeah. I would say like growing up down there, like I learned like you know like like people i feel like people learn about crystal meth from breaking bad yeah i learned about crystal meth from kids hanging on the boardwalk oh, in, yeah. in jenko it's like a, every kid who had jenko jeans that was on the boardwalk yeah. was was like twirling around it's on the, the boardwalk it's the high and people can stay high for so long oh, yeah. and if it's it a party drug, and it's a party so drug. Long. Yeah, i knew yeah. and th but i that was like 25 years ago these kids were doing this shit but um so we had a bungalow at the shore i was there all summer every summer we would like relocate there for my whole my whole life and then Sandy happened. Mm -hmm. So the house got wiped out in Sandy. What did you do at the shore? You worked one of the games? So I got... um <laughs> in a garage, you work on the this, fucking pin the tail on the so donkey, I'm, I'm, dominant the donkey game? So we're there every summer my whole life. My, I probably had, at this point I had like one like little job as like a, I'm like 14 years old. We're we're on the beach all day every day. One day on the beach, my other thing tannest man I've ever seen is in the Seaside Heights too. Oh, easily, oh, yeah. old dude. I never oh, seen yeah, a guy yeah. that tan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good. I'm 14. Like my mom bronzer, like, disgusting but, tan. Yeah, yeah, like sickly. Yeah. My mom just looks at me and goes. It's time for you to get a job. Like she says it on the at beach. At fourteen, at fourteen, she's like, you're getting, "You're getting a job." You can't tan, Peter, so you can't hang out with us on the beach. I, dude, I got, how annoying I, he was as a kid, fourteen-year-old kid, on the beach. Even he's like, "You know what? This kid needs to get honestly, a fucking job." Get him a shaved ice, little uh, hand truck. Get him out of here. Honestly, hey, I would. Hey ma, I'm, hey ma, hey ma. I'm the you know Peter. I, it's time you get a job. I'm the palest one of my. I would get I fun of in my family. Are. I would get, you say that to me like I don't know. That my already. mom is like, "What's wrong? You don't want to go in the sun." <laughs> It's like Fredo. I think uh, the gypsies brush you off my doorstep. <laughs> to, to, to this day, if, if you go to the beach with me, after like 20 minutes, I disappear. Oh, you had Ed. Because my mom would, Bro. my mom would, we would sit at the beach from like dawn to dusk. And she'd be like, there's only 70 days. We got to get all this. <laughs> oh, yeah. There's 70 days of UV rays to take so, in. So at 14, my mom goes, you got to go get a job. So there was a lady that lived two doors down. Her son ran, had one of the games on the boardwalk. And so he hired me for- What's the skim on that? I'm going to oh, go okay, on the whole okay, thing. Okay, all right, all right. So, so for seven bucks an hour- I'm blowing up balloons all day long. So it's the game where you throw the dart and yeah, you, pop, the dart you pop the balloon. With, uh -huh. Is that where you met that fucking guy? <laughs> so that's right. So like, he was a killer. <laughs> walking out with a big stuffed animal. <laughs> so I told you he was a killer. <laughs> so for a couple months, I'm, I'm blowing up balloons, but I'm watching the game. So I'm like learning how the guys run the, they, they run the game. And so you know, all these guys, like there were, each one of them was... Someone might have a stand, or they might have ten stands, but these guys all kind of knew each other on yeah. the boardwalk. They're all business owners. Yeah, in this, it's like working in the same mall. Like sure, everybody knows each other. The kiosk, if you will. So it, we call it a stand, but that's what, yeah, it, that's yeah. what it is. Yeah. So this one kid comes up to my boss Eric and goes, "We need uh, Troy down the down the boardwalk. Needs a break. Do you have anybody can, to, to, to give him a break?" And he goes, I, "I think the kid probably knows the game enough to do this." So this kid, his name is Jeff Hulse. I forget. I remember all these guys. It was thirty freaking years ago. And Still twenty years, right? Yeah. <laughs> for for all time, Jeff for, saw sunlight, for printing credit cards. <laughs> Jeff Hulse. You know what's funny is I ran into his brother on the boardwalk a couple weeks ago, and he's like a big time exec. I'm not gonna say what company, but he's like a oh, big time know. executive yeah. now. Oh, wow. like, they're all like businessmen. Yeah, they yeah, know yeah. how business works. That's yeah. great. So, so he's walking me down the boardwalk. We're walking like the equivalent of like two or three blocks, and he goes, "Listen, you have to decide right now." He's like, you're gonna you're gonna be in the stand by yourself for an hour. You want twelve bucks, or do you want twenty five percent of what you take in? 
and I have to decide in the, in a moment. And I was like, "Let it ride, baby." Hell yeah! 25%. I was. I'm a gam- I mean, I'm a gamer at heart. So I said, "Let's do it." So they throw me in the game. I still remember, like, I, I can picture some of the people that I was like, because like the, the way the game worked. This is the hustle of the game, and don't don't play these games. It's like two dollars for three dollars at this. Now you get charged like twenty dollars. Back then we would get in trouble for charging for more than like five bucks. Because you can make so, your own price up, basically. Well, you basically are run. You're, yeah, you're kind of running, running your own the game. Show. Yeah. The the hustle of the game is you're looking at these giant stuffed animals, right? And then you spend five bucks and you throw a bunch, you pop a bunch of balloons, and then they there's a plastic like parakeet under the counter, and that's what you've won. Okay. And and you're with your. Yeah, girlfriend, yeah, 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 you know, yeah. you're on the boardwalk. You're taking, yeah. it. especially the Italian guys are trying to. And flex. I'm like, yo, buddy, oh, yeah. I'm like, buddy, you're gonna, you're gonna let her walk around. Oh with the man! So these guys, you would rope these guys in, and then they, next thing they know, they spent thirty, forty dollars yeah. to win. Still, even like one of these smaller stuffed animals. Yeah, so that you overcharge about that stuffed animal about four hundred percent at that point, right? Yeah so, yeah, yeah. so this, so to this day, the I was told that I was to get ten times what the animal cost. So I remember that the Cookie Monster cost eighty cents. So I was to get eight dollars minimum for the Cookie Monster. Yeah. There were there were these plush uh, like uh, huskies. They mm. were like actually like a nice stuffed animal. They cost my boss seven dollars and fifty cents. So you, if you were gonna win that, you were gonna spend seventy five dollars yeah. to win that yeah. stuffed animal. So the whole game is just getting people in the game and involved because it's a progressive game. Sure. It's like three, you know, seven smalls made a medium, three mediums made a large. So you can never win it all at once. You no, have there, to. So there was one extra large ticket, and they would like leave the balloon off, or like sometimes some guys would thumb the X. Oh, there was stuff like okay. that. Yeah, yeah. People, wait, 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 wait. So that's so when you hit the because back up, I'm getting a little lost. You hit the dart behind the behind the balloon. Is it is a ticket that either says S M L or X L? Oh, okay, right. and that shows XL you what you get. XL is choice, but really to get choice, you got to spend like a hundred dollars. So oh. on the on the board itself, like without the scam, on the board itself, there's uh, what a hundred balloons? Maybe yeah. But it's a it's just a wall. You imagine this whole wall here is all just covered in balloons. Balloons. Yeah. Now people thought the hustle was that the balloons didn't pop. Mm-hmm. And actually, that was one of my little things. So I'd be standing here looking at you talking, and the balloons are behind me. And I have the darts right here, and you, you come up like, oh, you can't pop those. This is, those balloons are made out of lead. You can't. And I would take a dart, and over my shoulder, I would just pop a balloon. Mm-hmm. That, they were in. That's it. Yeah, like, they yeah, saw yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. And I've always been fascinated by like cons and like con artists. Sure. So I did so well that, that I ended up doing like 45 minutes. And I remember, I think I took in well, like- wait, tell us the con though. What is, so wait, that's The con gonna... is just getting people to play the game. There's no winning the game. So if I hit a balloon, how many on the board, there's 100 balloons. How many tags say XL? One? One. Okay. And how many say large? There might be twenty or thirty larges, but large is like a Mr. Potato Head. It's not. It's a large is the Cookie Monster that costs eight dollars. Okay, that was eight. That's eighty cents. It's not what you think it is. Yeah. Those an, those animals that you that you want to win are on display. Yeah. They're to lure you in. And now, are you just making up how many larges take an XL as you go? No. Like if he hits a large first time, you go oh. Then you've already got one large. Then you go, oh, look, that's that's a large. But now you got to get seven larges to get to yeah. the next level. But is it always seven, or are you, no, you, that was, you well, winging that number depending no, on how it No, you wouldn't do that. Does. But what you would do is be like, listen, buddy, listen, don't, you can't do this. But. Give me, give me ten bucks and I'll give you thirty darts. You know, it's like that's well, what it's, a, it's, like, uh, it's used cars. Because when I sold used cars, it's uh-huh. a similar thing. It's like I know where I live, and I know where I, how low I can possibly go. Yeah. Everything else is just play money, right? So if I'm like, yeah, you know, this thing would cost normally this, you know, I could do for you. I probably knock down about a hundred bucks if you're willing to buy today. Like you could just start making deals because there is no Kelly Blue Book with that particular car. You could look at it and go, the Kelly Blue Book, like, oh yeah, so it does say that it's worth this much money, but you don't know the story behind this car, but I know the story behind this car. <laughs> you know, the woman that brought this in, God rest her soul, she lived down the street from me. This woman, she put 70 miles on it in one year. That was it. I took this car in, it's been sitting here for for, for five, six days. It's gonna go, this is the first car it's gonna go on the weekend. Now it's on. Like now it's on. Yeah, dude, you could, you I'm could. such a rube. I think I could beat this game, and I want to buy that car. Yeah. <laughs> You're my guy. You're my mark, man. Wait, I see I'm you all by, especially with a, a girl you've outkicked your coverage on. Some fucking Jersey chick who's kind of hot. I'm like, hey, pal. See, here's the thing. It's not even the uh, in front of the girl thing. It's it's me it's going. Your I can beat you. I can beat you. Well, that's what people yeah. they wanted to beat you. So yeah. I I ended up working there like four summers. And I, listen, imagine 14 year old me. Like I looked like a kid. Yeah. Like I. Had curly hair and I would so dudes would think like oh I'm gonna take this kid for, for a ride. oh yeah yeah and then they didn't know what what happened mm-hmm. and so they saw how well I did that one time so now now the rival guy who so 
the the guy that I took a break for, his name was Troy. What I found out later, he was a carny from Wisconsin. Oh, And wow. he was traveling the country. And what, he like ran away from home to join the carnival. And one day someone says, hey, dude, if you go to Jersey, there's a carnival that never leaves. <laughs> oh, you, don't, God. you don't have to live. You don't have, to, dream. Live, you don't have to live in a carnival <laughs> <dream>. anymore. <laughs> so now it's Troy and um, it, Frank, is the, dream. Frank is the guy who's the, who's the owner of the stand. He had a couple different stands. And then uh, Jeff was another kid that worked for him. So basically, and, and me. So I stopped working for Eric because I don't want to blow balloons for $7 an hour anymore. Yeah. I want to make real oh, money. Yeah. So now I'm running games. And then there was another guy, Howard, who had like a roller skating rink in, in Virginia that he would come up for the summer. But then one year I was running the game for Howard and he was in jail. Oh. And so he would call me collect from the stand. <laughs> and, accept the charges. and I would accept the charges to make sure that everything was okay for the game. And it became a thing where I was, dude, I was doing this. So the boardwalk would open at 11 in the morning and go to like one in the morning. Oh yeah. So people are on the beach, but they're walking the boardwalk. And then at night you would go on the boardwalk, there's rides, all this yeah. stuff. So I that would, was the move. Right? You go to the beach, you get your tan on, then you go home and shower, and then you hit the boardwalk for so some So I games. was working like 11 to 5 in one stand. I'd go home for an hour, and then I'd work from like 6 to closing in another stand. And I was like 14, 15 years old. I couldn't. I was like addicted to making money. And the funny thing is, again, my mom's on the beach all day long. I would come home. She knew I had an hour dinner break. I'd get back to the house. No one was at the house. She was still oh, at the beach. <laughs> so there was a summer, there's a famous uh, there's a famous pizzeria called Sawmill Pizza, and you get like for three dollars you get a giant slice and a and a coke. Mm -hmm. I ate sawmill like 70 of 70 days one summer. Oh, yeah. That was my dinner. Like yeah. the whole time I was up there. And every Your time I was like, go, fucking. She's like, like, she's like, the sun is still out. Like, what do you want me to do? Go. <laughs> I'm like, Mom, we're here the whole summer. We live with this, is our house. We're not Betty's here for the weekend. You're going to squeeze out. I swear to God. I hate the beach to this fucking I know. Day. It's the worst, dude. I, I go to the beach. I jump in the ocean. I dry off and I go home. Yeah, I yeah, can't yeah, stand yeah, yeah. it. I get, I get so angry. You see your mother smoking a cigarette for five, 15 fucking hours. I can't stand <laughs> You eat by yourself. <laughs> My girlfriend's like, where are you going? Like, we take more time unloading the car at the beach than we spend at the beach. I'll go, like, I've been like. Take me to the games. <laughs> I've, dude, I've been <laughs> playing video poker. <laughs> <laughs> so, There's Karachi. He's up he's at the boardwalk. So, <laughs> he <just> some nostalgia. <laughs> I would come home with, like, like, wads of cash. So, like, I remember, I mean, I never, like, again, I was 14, so it wasn't, a, but I was making, like, seven to $900 cash a week. Oh, that's a, that's huge at 14. Huge. 14 dude. I was keeping it in my sock drawer and I would come home and I, I started getting like, I started organizing the bills. Like the I one person you don't trust in the house goes to all the time, your sock drawer. <laughs> yeah, I was so stupid. I started organizing the bills by the uh, by the uh, the Federal Reserve stamp. Like there's like a there's if you look at a bill, there's a different letter for a different federal. Like yeah, you meant to launder oh. money. <laughs> Wait, so that it, for what reason? Just to just because I'm bored. Just, just to obsess. I'm not gonna I'm, spend it because I'm OCD. Gonna, it's like it's, <laughs> just because I'm upset. What is this? What is this hustle? Yeah, man, he's like the Italian Scrooge like, McDuck. No, this he's is just actually bathing different. in his body. Dude I, dude, I think one time I, I did I did lay it on the bed and just got it. <laughs> at the end of the summer. Dude, 14 year old and lay it on fifteen hundred dollars. I don't uh, how'd you get hep C, Peter? Well I don't I don't want to get ahead of myself. Money. I paid for a year of college while I was in college. Do, like doing that. Like I literally I think oh, I made man. like fifteen grand one year and I paid uh, for a year of awesome. school while I was awesome. in school. And it's oh, one of those dude. works that you can't do forever because part of it's being a kid. Well, Part so of it's that, that energy, that youth. I was 14 and I'm literally hanging out. I couldn't believe it. Like Troy was 27 and Frank was 30. And I couldn't believe that I was hanging out with guys this yeah, age when I was right. 14. Yeah. And there was like a crew of kids that I was friends with down there. And they always wanted to go out and do stuff. But I'm like, no, I'm, I'm working. Yeah. So then I start, people started like visiting me at the stand. I started meeting girls, all this stuff. And I got to a point where I just couldn't like, I couldn't stomach like hustling people anymore. Oh, really? And so what ended up happening was... I, I, I think I did it three, four years, and I, I needed the money, so I couldn't. And I, what was I going to do after this? I was going to go get a six dollar an hour. A lot of strippers yeah, have the right. same story. I just couldn't you. break the chain. Of <laughs> the money was so good, I couldn't stand ripping off these oh, these slobs. But I'll tell, you, I'll tell you, like this, the sad, the saddest moment. This is what actually made me quit doing this. I, I was, it was like the end of the one summer, and. Uh, 
Again, this, these these plush huskies. They were seven dollars and fifty cents. <laughs> Third time you mentioned these huskies. <laughs> I still. <laughs> this is what the fucking two creme de la creme. There was two of them. Next time I get to the shore, I'm getting one. <laughs> I'm playing, it's, getting, it's going right next to the sign. There's two of them. So that, if you have to also imagine the stand, like the, where the blues were, was kind of a false wall, and yeah. it would actually be like storage. So Troy would like nap back there, uh-huh. like on the stuffed animals. So it's like the end of the summer, and these guys all they want to do is get these. Huskies for their girlfriends, and I got them in the game. Also, these dudes run out of money, and they were nice guys. Yeah. Like I, I kind of was at a point like they had spent like say like a hundred and twenty dollars that whole summer. Wow. I could no no that night. <laughs> so I wow. so I could have given them the huskies, but I was so like in You're my married at the game, dude. You can't. So do it. I literally said to the guy, they're like they were out of cash, and I go, guys, there's an ATM like a block away. <laughs> 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 you guys could go there, and this was this was in the, in the '90s when people weren't just going to the ATM. Oh, right? no, yeah, yeah. Yeah. it was like a big like you went to yeah. the bank. Like yeah, this yeah. was not like yeah. you're not going to get cash, and um, <laughs> so. <laughs> Write themselves a check. I mean, if you you could have probably a if one of your girlfriends shows me their titties, I got a feeling one of these. I remember fall off the wall. Troy. Troy comes out from the back. He was a he goes, dude. I, he goes, I listened to every. He goes, you hammered those guys, and he was so proud of. Of me. course right. he was, and I felt so dirty uh, that I went home and I even like I told my mom, and I, th- I I I might be conflating two different things, but I think my mom told me that my great grandmother died like that night, and I kind of like I was like. Is this, you killed her. Did I use this punch? <laughs> like divine retribution. And I was like crying. <laughs> no, no, no. Oh, the part of a thought. She was 93. <laughs> but still, I felt, I felt, it almost felt like it was like, uh, like, like it was related. All right. Let me, uh, I, 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 I don't know, know if it's because yeah. I ripped those guys off or because I put the D <laughs> in front of the E. I only turned the lights off twice. <laughs> Instead of my normal 10. <laughs> I was running late. I'm sorry, God. I was running late. You know what, though? If you play those games, fucking you're an idiot. You just, it's just like, there's only so much I can do. It's like those people that got told, I don't know if you remember when that magician, the illusionist, like exposed all of those uh, preachers, those ev- yeah. evangelicals. About, oh, hey, look, this guy has a fucking mic and he has people going around recording your conversations and then he has an earpiece telling, like, telling him what you said. So he acts like it's God talking to him and he shows these people this. They're mad at him. For revealing that, some people just want to believe the lie. Dude, there's, that's like, on them. People want to be hustle, and that's the thing is, and, and it's funny because it's like the bigger the hustle, the more people believe it because they yes. don't want to believe they could really fall for right. something. Yes, that's how it cons it's work. become right. self-preservation more than reality and truth. Because I like I, I remember walking in. I was like 20 years old. I walked into a like a leather store, and it was these people were like, let's just like they were part of. Maybe the Middle East or North Africa. Like, yeah. I couldn't tell exactly what they were, but there was there was literally a, a culture of like barter and yes, like yes. working oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. in stores and stuff. Yeah. And this kid who was like around the same age as me just puts this leather jacket on me, and like can, like this. What were you doing in there? I was just looking at leather jackets, but I had no business of buying yeah, a leather jersey. Yeah. Short? No, this was in college. Oh, oh yeah. and I was I think I was in D.C. You know, that so- smell of leather for us Italian guys. It's a fucking. <laughs> Oh. Dude, to I this, get a whiff of leather. I'm walking like, in. Dude, floating off his feet. <laughs> floating, garages, floating off his feet. Dude, dude 20, 20 years later, this leather jacket is still too big for me. <laughs> but it's like the Undertaker's little brother. <laughs> so, but I appreciate that this guy. <laughs> I appreciate that this guy. <laughs> That's so funny. You skipped to the end where the fucking Middle Eastern kid ran you. <laughs> but I still appreciate the hustle so much. How do he get you? I don't, I just to don't get remember. a hustler, you got to be so I was so just good. seduced. Like, I was seduced by uh, the idea of buying it, of spending the money, of not uh, caring about the I money. Have, and I, When you get hustled by a hustler, I have. I always like, – I had a guy hustle my wife and game, I over dude. some knives for our wedding. You know how when you, were, you plan a wedding, you expect to get a bunch of free offers? Uh-huh. Well, we got duped by this company that was like, we're going to give you like $20,000 of free shit. You just have to attend this seminar about these knives. Oh, like a timeshare kind of thing? And this guy oh, – this guy was one of the gr- he's probably the greatest salesman I've ever met in my whole life. Oh, he wow. got me good. He got my wife good too. Oh wow. Uh, but he had us buying <laughs> a pair of knives, like a set of knives for two G's, and he like demonstrated them and he sold these things to like twenty other couples that were at the seminar thinking they were gonna get free shit. He had us all cutting checks that day, and then as I walked out, I talked to Lauren. I go, $2,000? I was like, I, there's something up. And I, then I looked it up when I got home. It was it was like 2015. So phones were phones like they are now. But for whatever reason, it wasn't like a thing to just Google something in the moment, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I get home. 
Amazon had them for like 150 bucks. Wow. So we called, and this is how we knew it was a hustle, because I called the cancel. I was all upset. And I was like, this is an outrage, whatever. And the woman on the other line goes, no problem. We'll cancel your order. And just hung up, because she knows it's a work. Yeah. This guy probably makes 200 grand a year by people like us who are too embarrassed to actually call and cancel it, though, because yeah. they got duped. We like oh so you did get ca- you were well, able to I was, it? Yeah, yeah because they knew they couldn't hold because what they do is to make it legal they can't charge you day of they they have you fill out with your credit card info mm-hmm. and you give it to him and then he charges you later so like a couple days later they'll run it through the system but it's not an instantaneous charge I don't know if that was because they knew a lot of people were going to cancel once they found out it was a hustle huh. and they had to keep like That's a like grace real period estate. like you have a certain amount of yes. time to like uh, if you uh, sign a yes. contract you yeah. can actually back out of yeah. the deal yeah, 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 to protect yeah. people yeah. from getting ripped off yeah That's so what, it's, it's a protection it's Ross a protection yeah, yeah. but it, in reality people probably kept their shit you know what they were think of we're all, like you guys remember uh, door to door salesmen Did yeah, you guys oh, yeah. House? Zachy we, Peanuts is one we I had think. a we had we had a vacuum <laughs> now, guy currently <laughs> he's, really he's, one. he's doing it in Seattle so my so my mom <laughs> he's got a little he's got town a, from the they're stuck in the 50s dude we had, we had a guy the, the, my mother had to be this guy's fa- like this guy was a traveling insurance man, salesman and my mother had to be his favorite client and we, because when I we grew up like for part of my life in, on a farm in Jersey, but like out in the middle of nowhere, like like driving was like a quarter mile long. Like this, we're in the middle of nowhere. Yeah. This guy came to our house like once a month because wow. my mom, he would just, and he was like an older Italian guy, whatever. And the, what the salesmen do is they become whatever you are. Of course. So if my mom talks about her church group, all of a sudden he's a fucking Presbyterian. Uh, you know what I mean? Yeah, like yeah, he yeah, just yeah, yeah, becomes, yeah. that's yeah. They, they mirror what they're yeah. doing. So this guy would sit at the table. Dude, my mom would call me and she'd be like, Peter. She goes, there's an insurance policy. If you're ever hospitalized, you get $40 a day. I'm like, mom, I'm 24 years old. Yeah. What do I need to worry about? Like, but she couldn't wait to buy the next yeah. insurance policy from this guy. And this oh, is how this guy wow. made his oh, living. Oh, man, he probably made a killing. Wow. And again, those things is like, they know how much money they need to get as a base, and everything they get over is, bo- is so bonus. So then infomercials took over for that guy, and then now we have whatever we have that took over Influencers for infomercials. Yeah, yeah. Influencers and, and that, guys, that's people all, They're the just internet. door-to-door snake oil salesmen. Brand, all these people. All this branding, any kind of mm-hmm. thing where it's like, so, well, celebrity endorsement. What is a celebrity? Yeah. It's, it's I want to get this thing because of fame. Dude, yep. restaurant business. You know, I worked at Tao. You know how many people came in because they knew that some famous person was there 10, of course. 10 years before? I mean, Tao stayed in business solely off the publicity. I yeah. mean, in a lot of ways. I mean, I know it's a great group as a party They do a great job. But they we do a get, great job. We would get up. It was funny. Running joke is uh, I had to deal with these like British. Uh, this lady was like yelling at me. Like zero like, trash, a lot of. But yeah, she's like, we're from central London. And I didn't even know what that I was like, oh, well, this is central Manhattan. So I don't know. Like, ah. <laughs> <laughs> but what's so central London is like a thing. It's like telling people that you are the poshest of the posh. Like if you can live in central London, you're like. So they're not used to being told you got to wait 30 minutes for your table. Of course. So it came. We were, we were all on like earpieces. So we would talk to each other and my friend Bill he would see me just like talking to some lady just being like Ugh. and he's like let me guess central London and it was always somebody oh, from London hilarious. and then one time this lady she was actually kind of like cocky she wasn't even central London but she was still from England and she was being a huge pain in the ass and I kind of smoothed things over and I said can I just ask you a question I was like we got a lot of people from London like what is it about that you guys all come what here what can we do to York? make you not come here anymore well, <laughs> She goes, she goes, we all know that Kim Kardashian had her birthday party at Teo. Oh, but it was like 10 name. years before, and it oh. was the Pal Las Vegas. Like, but they were still coming because it's New York City and because a celebrity that's wild, went there. But that's, but it's, that's a scam, too. When oh, you yeah. Think about yeah. It. Oh, my God. It's all, now that all that, you know, I'm not going to talk about this very much, but all of that stuff that comes out where, you know, with this Diddy shit, where you're realizing, wow, all these people are duping, like, they're only famous because they're complicit in duping other people. Like, even the Kardashians are talking about, oh, yeah, they drug powerful men at these parties so they can get them on film to blackmail them. That's the whole, that's the whole scheme. Oh, I didn't even hear it's about It's like that. everyone's kind of complicit in... You like think these people are like Marilyn Monroe? What a beauty! But in reality, she's like a, she's she's like a, a piece of the state. Like I mean, they, how do you fuck both Kennedys without having some yeah. connection or involvement in the overall well, conspiracy the, theory? The conspiracy is <clears throat> the conspiracy of people wanting to be rich and famous, yes. and wanting something for nothing. Adam well, Carolla has a great joke. He goes, "You would never meet to uh, like a surgeon." You wouldn't be like, hey, listen, if you suck this guy's dick, I'll make you a fucking head of surgery. It's only because there's the dream yes. that you really could just put a person in a position to become rich and famous uh-huh. that people even believe that, oh, if I do if I do this terrible thing, yes. then I will get this thing that I really want. And at the end of the day, I'm like, well, good for you. I mean, as much as it sucks to be victim.
victimize and have someone fuck you over and rape you. But it's like if you did it solely to become rich and famous, that's problematic. Yeah. I mean, if yeah, that's yeah. what you're offering. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's also, though, the thing I, I, I'm jumping past that a little bit or back past. But the, like Pete Davidson, like the yeah. reason he's getting all of these women is because he got that first that one. first one. Yeah. You know what I mean? And it's like it's a just, good job. It's like, yeah, I was, you know, I was yeah. the secretary of state. <laughs> you know, you get after the secretary <laughs> of state. Yeah, you're affiliated. Yeah. That's what you get to be like. You're, head, you're head, in the know. You yeah. get to be a board of director after I that I sit job. on five boards now. I was secretary of state. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. It's fucking but um, I, was, I wanted to uh, get to where I built the house and all that stuff. Oh, okay. So we... I don't, I don't, unless you don't <laughs> want... talk more about Poontang? <laughs> no, I don't want no, no, to. No, no, I wanted to wrap up the, the stand thing. So you finally got sick of doing the stand because you, st you didn't want to rip people off anymore. So how was it working the first summer after... All those summers of a very formidable. I also want job. to know. I also want to know before that. Even uh, how did you resign? Like, did they call you a oh, pussy? Yeah. Like, what was the, what was how did the Troy day? deal like, with you yeah. saying I'm out? Well, so here, that's funny you say that. So I started to be kind of a mope around the job. Uh huh. And Not you, Troy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Troy one time goes. He goes. What happened to you, kid? Yeah, oh, <laughs> he goes. I love, he goes. I you love had. This guy. He goes. You had so much potential. Oh, I love it. And I and I thought about it. I was like, dude, he's he's like my parents. He's telling me like I'm not doing good yeah. enough at school. Your like if, died I'm not eyes, applying right? myself enough as a con artist. Like he could sense that I was like just going through the motions. He goes, I don't know. He goes, what is it? You got interested in girls. You don't want to be here no more. Yeah, he yeah, goes, some, <laughs> some guy, some fucking guy, some 28 year old guy, won a fucking doll. And Troy comes around the corner. What happened to you, kid? <laughs> you I let that go for for. It's like. A, Good this. I wasted four good napkins on this. <laughs> no, it's like Apollo on the beach of Rocky. What's the matter with you, Rock? <laughs> you could be kicking this guy's dick in from Trenton and you let him walk away after a dollar? What are you doing? I don't believe in myself anymore. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's over. He walks away from you? <laughs> it's over. <laughs> I dude, I need uh, I need an Adrian telling me it's okay oh, to be a fighter <laughs> at least once every six months. <laughs> dude, my girlfriend yelled at me the other day. <laughs> She's watching back. You can win. <laughs> I'm so. You can get out of bed and put new underwear on. I be I become such a mush and I go in my head. So I I constantly need someone else to fucking tell me. I wish I could hire. If I ever get a chance where I could hire a personal assistant, that person's most of their uh, job. That poor is gonna, is that poor me, son of a bitch. You <laughs> you remember? Like I'm having an speech to him. Like every four months, say this to me. You pick the time. Don't tell me uh, what's coming. You wanted this. <laughs> no one chose this life for you. <laughs> I had to be. Oh god. Again, not to jump ahead. I had, I was going to an improv show, like a class show, and I was talking myself out of going to the show. I'm like, ah, you know, my leg hurts. No, oh, yeah, my yeah, tummy, yeah, yeah. my tummy aches, and I'm literally walking to this. I'm like, you. No, your mom didn't tell you how to take improv. Like this is the, the yeah. thing that you wanted to yeah, do. Right, right. Why are you trying to talk? And it ended up being like a great show. It actually ended up kind of leading me to do it stand up. But I'm like, I'm always talking myself out of doing stuff. I do that, no, and I need I, I needed somebody to be like. And so like Troy was like, just like my parents was like, why are you not working? hard like we know you have potential we know you're smart you're you're a naturally gifted con artist why are you not doing a better playing your family trade because your i gifts? also got like troy got lighting play. a cigarette off another cigarette <laughs> going, wait, 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 i don't wait, know what wait, happened wait, to wait, you wait, kid wait. I, I don't know what that pop with half a beer so, <laughs> so some of these guys i still see like some of these guys are still on the boardwalk and but troy i have no like he kind of disappeared into the ether but i want you to picture this guy again this is 90s Wisconsin accent on the Jersey Shore, mullet, oh, razor blades. I'm in. Oh yeah. Cut off shorts, sleeveless like uh, t-shirt with like splashes. He's of a white trash color. boss. Oh, okay. Ama amazing, amazing. Yeah. And then there was another guy. Uh, there was a guy Buck, and also <laughs> razor blade. So this is so my so my boss also had a game. Where he, he also had a game called Shoot the Geek, where you would shoot paintballs at a guy wearing a Saddam Hussein mask. <laughs> and that game made more money than oh, any yeah. of the games. Oh yeah, they know their market. People uh, would yeah. just so. The the paintballs came from like a warehouse in like the like outside of Philly. So like it was a, a guy. It was a guy in like a full body armor. Yeah, with yeah, yeah. Was he talking that. shit? Uh, yeah. So like they tried. Was he do it in the accent. Like a I don't remember what they did. They tried to get my little brother to do it one summer, and my brother's like, "This is this sucks. I'm not doing <laughs> yeah, this yeah, anymore." Yeah. So he would have to find some like street kid to fucking yeah, do this oh, for like yeah. twelve bucks an hour. Yeah. 
So imagine the heat too. You put all that shit on, oh, and dude. all day someone shooting. Well, what you. about you ever see like the uh, where you had to dunk the clown, and a guy's just yeah, he's, he's just, like talking shit the whole just time. Yeah, yeah. Everybody, yeah. 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 yeah, that was like yeah. the first like stand up comedy yeah, kind yeah, of thing yeah. I ever saw. Like because he's just ripping. Well, people so I was apart. I was barking people in. I was ta- like I, I feel like it was like my first showbiz job because yeah. I was like I was Bartering. talking to people. Yeah, I was yeah, always yeah. like I was and I was alone in the game running the game, but um. One time, Frank sent me to go get the paintballs. So he gave me two thousand dollars cash. I'm sick. I think I just got my driver's license, and he had like a beat up old pickup truck that was like his like work truck. And this guy Buck is working with us again. Razor blades. I don't think I ever saw the guy's eyes ever. <laughs> he never took. It. So we're walking t- down the street t- to where the pickup truck is, and Buck is probably twenty four, and I'm sixteen. Yeah. Buck lights up a joint the size of my arm yeah. as we're walking to the car, and he goes, "Yeah." He goes, "You know." He goes, I'm older than you, but Frank gave you the money, and Frank gave you the keys. Huh. And then he goes, you know what? Buck's not my real name, so I guess I understand. <laughs> <laughs> but I was like, these are the people that I was like spending yeah. my like life yeah, with. And then it was awesome. like, so then I got like to a point where I was like, I'm going to college now. I'm like around like a higher echelon of person. So I just didn't want to Yeah, now be you're a real- comic around dirtbags all over yeah, again. Right. So I always say like, it's funny because like, I wanted to get out of the restaurant business to do comedy, but comedy is the restaurant business. Yeah. You're hanging out in kitchens, you're waiting for like drunk people, yeah, you're seeing yeah. people. It's the same, it's the same kind of people too. So you get, at some point along the line there, you learn your your family's craft of construction. Oh, so so the house gets ruined in Sandy. Okay. So we have an empty- Sandy's like what? Hurricane, it was about 13, 13 years ago. Two, almost exactly. 13. Yeah, it's 12 in, in 13. October. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, okay. I remember because we were down for like Labor Day weekend and then like a couple weeks later is when. Yeah. So the house just gets, we're like, you know, it's a peninsula. There's a bay and an ocean on either side of us. Mm-hmm. Both like the bay and the ocean like met where the house was. Damn. And it was an old bungalow that, um, you know, it's probably like a 67 year old bungalow. Mm-hmm. At this point, my grandfather had left it to my mom. So it's in my mom's name. So then we just knock the bungalow down. And for years, I get Sicilians are like, it's, I always say like, my family is like, it's always the end of the world. Yeah. So every holiday, my mom's like, what are we going to do at the shore? It was like yeah, this yeah, like yeah. this like burden. Like, oh my God, you have a, a free lot at the ocean. Like, you yeah. don't know what to do. It's, yeah. like, it's always, an, so it's just, should we sell the lodge? What should we do? Should we build a house? So one day out of the So blue, it was completely demolished, basically. So it's a, it's it was a, done. It's a rectangle of dirt that we would have to cut the grass every two weeks. Oh, so there's nothing left there's at all. No pipes, there. no nothing. It's no, nothing. done. Everything yeah. is, we tore the whole house down. So one day my mom goes, hey, why don't you build us a house? You need a day job? I have no <laughs> idea. Dude. And so, Dude. How old are you at this point? And this was, I mean, this was like five years ago, six years ago. I'm older. <laughs> old so, old, mom. You know what, Peter? You need a job. Just build us a <laughs> house. watch you mope around the house. <laughs> so... <laughs> I don't Quit moping around the dirt lot. I don't know. Either how to go re- to the beach or get a job. <laughs> so I don't know how to read plans. Like I don't know how to do anything. You're like a savant and then read English. You just fucking play by ear. So I taught I taught myself how to read plans, and I had to like do every aspect of being the. I, I was a general contractor, yeah. and I built. I ended up. I mean. I built a beautiful house, and I, to this awesome. day, I, in the I, backyard, there's a balloon yeah, wall. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Picture <laughs> of the guy. It's three blocks in the basement. <laughs> there's, it's, there's a wheel that turns. <laughs> it's literally three blocks from the stands that he used to work on. That's amazing. And so the whole town kind of had a lot of damage, and so now a lot of the town is, is remade. So where Club Karma was is knocked down. They're building condos, yeah, and I heard like that. stores and all that yeah. stuff. They're redoing. But when we started building, there really wasn't anything doing in the town because after uh-huh. the hurricane, two people were like, "Oh, the shore's over." It's sure, over. dude. Yeah. After, dude. After Sandy, you could have bought a house down there for fifty grand. Oh, if I would have, like, knowing that now makes me so sick to my stomach. At the time, people were like, "This shore's done. We're never gonna. Yeah. Go. There's gonna wow. be hurricanes every year." Yeah, Meanwhile, yeah, yeah, it's been yeah, thirteen right. years. There hasn't been a yeah, one. Yeah. Yeah. And, and it, it's just like it's just a crazy thing. But you know, no one knew at the sure. time. So I ended up building uh, this house, and it was dude. I was panicked because again, I, I didn't know what I was doing. And then on top of that, it's like my parents. Like I knew they were in Florida for a little while. Then they came back, and when they left, there was no house. And when they came back, it was like framed. So you could actually just like walk through the structure, and I'm what showing two story. It's the uh, so you had to do because of uh, like flood elevation. Yeah. So like the ground floor, the, it's on stilts. The ground floor is a garage, and then it's two two stories above that. Nice. So I'm showing them this house that I figured out how to build. It's amazing. And they're walking around, and my dad goes, "There's no stairs over here," and my mom's like, "Oh, we didn't put a cover on the." De-. I'm like, "My," I was like. It's can, you t- can you tell me I'm proud? You're proud yeah, of me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I literally figured out how to build a house. Yeah, yeah. And my dad's like, I don't like it. There's no stairs over here. What are you doing? Uh, I was like, Can you just tell me, like, good job? Like, not, not. and I like it, it made me crazy. I'm like, You guys designed the house. I'm like, yeah, we designed it. The architect designed it. I'm like, He designed it to your specifications. <laughs> I mean, yeah, you got to say something, right? I mean, you're paying for it. 
So I finished I finished the house and, and if the funny thing is, um people like I remember one of the fire inspector came through and he goes, Oh, are you a, a builder down here? I go, No, I'm a comedian and a restaurant manager from New York City. He goes, No shit. He goes, You wouldn't believe how many of the builders down here can't figure this stuff out. Oh, oh shit. Wow. Yeah. And I said to him, I said, you know what, funnily enough, did like, you take a restaurant job right after building that house? I did. Like, you had well, all that good energy in your life and you didn't you just Well stopped? no, no. So I mean again, I, you have to have come oh. you have to have me back. Because okay. there's like there's I could do like three more hours <laughs> on this up. <laughs> So I finished the house and I it, we turned it into an Airbnb because you have to like pay for yeah. the construction was of course it was more than anyone thought course, it was yeah, going to yeah, be. Yeah, my oh, parents were like, oh yeah, my god! Yeah, yeah. And my parents all my family all kind of moved down the shore in the last couple of years, oh. so no one really needs a beach house anymore. So long story short, I was going to get to like the worst job I had. So we're we're Airbnb and it's making some money, but it's basically paying for the construction. Mm-hmm. So it's not like we're like pocketing a bunch of money. So I kind of panic. It's now it's the pandemic. So I finished the house the first week of lockdown. Oh my gosh, is, that's awesome though because yeah. you get to hang out in there. <laughs> well, but they closed the beaches. Uh, We're like, what's going uh, that's on? Right, that's right. right. That's right. But then you know, eventually things open up. We stayed down there. I actually lived down there for. I would like rent one apartment and stay in the other apartment for part of the pandemic. So I, I needed money. So because I had done the construction thing, I'm like, is someone going to hire me to be like a builder? Like no one's going to hire a kid who has no yeah. experience, or whatever. So I see a Facebook ad for house painter. And I was like, well, I, I painted the whole house myself. I literally, from the sheetrock, did all the priming, oh, all the shit. painting. Crazy amount of work. God, I hate that. So I called this worst. guy who's got a Facebook ad for painter. I said, hey, man, I need, I was like, I've was i never been a professional painter, but I painted this house. I've done all this stuff. And he just goes, uh, I, I don't know. He's like, you got a driver's license? I go, yeah, who, who doesn't have a driver's <laughs> license? So he begrudgingly hires me. I realized that no one has a driver's license because everyone who works for a house painter is an ex-con oh, yeah. or an active uh, like drug addict. Yeah. Oh right. So he's paying me now fifteen dollars an hour to paint closets on these like houses down the shore because now there's like a building boom yeah. going on uh. during the pandemic and after the pandemic. And at one point, like, and I literally, like, he would just leave me in a house and like I don't know how to do perfect like he wouldn't give me instructions he wouldn't give me like any I was like waiting for him to like coach me up sure. on how to do it he would leave for the day come back and be like oh dude what did you do over here I'm like dude I, I, I told been, you I don't know I've been here for eight hours you couldn't do- so I was never fast enough I ne- so at one point he was paying me 15 bucks an hour and he goes listen he's like I gotta take a dollar an hour away from you you're too slow and I want to be like I'm the only one who has a driver's license. Yeah, I, mean, I'm val- I'm, I thought I'd be a value. I'm here. picking Big Mike up every day because <laughs> <laughs> Big Mike just did ten years in the joint yeah. and just got out, and I'm the I'm the only one who's like showing up every day. Isn't that worth that one dollar an hour? <laughs> nah. So that was it's funny because that was kind of like a low that then led me to coming back to New York City yeah. after that, like getting a restaurant job, which then led to comedy and stuff like that. Dude. But like at that point, I was like, how co- let me ask you this at how many points during that like painting job did you consider going back to the boardwalk? <laughs> you know what's funny is I because dude you could turn a quick seven hundred. Are yeah. oh, you gonna take a dollar an hour? Right. You know what, Mike? <laughs> Fuck off. You know what, Mike? Maybe you couldn't pop one of these balloons with this dart. <laughs> if I didn't have you want to win a doll for your kid? How's your kid? How's your kid feel about the Power Rangers? You want to get a? <laughs> I I've gotten in my own way so many times of make, making more money. That's oh, probably another it. way of me just like mushing myself out of more money. Oh man, I should have probably done that. Isn't that crazy? Like that when when you're raised a certain way, especially in Sicilian households, where you're raised by those kind of Sicilian. There's like a couple kind of Sicilians you can get raised by. Like my my grandfather was a quiet like nice guy, but really angry on the inside. Yeah, like, yeah. but never would show it to the people he loved. But when you would see him. He had like an ethic, which was really great. Uh, but my grandmother was a was very much a shit talker. Oh. And then you have a version of Sicilian, Sicilian people that I know that are related to me that are the ones that are like, hey, uh, this isn't good enough. Oh, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. Like you're always yeah. being told that something's right. not good enough. So oh, you dude. carry this like this fucking uh, flamethrower to burn every bridge you've built down because of your own self doubt that's been instilled upon you since the beginning. Everyone of time. in my family is so critical, and I and I realize that when they I, haven't I, done I shit. Do to- like I have a, I would have resumes longer than anyone in the, that's talking to me in some of these situations, and they're saying shit to me. And after a while, one time, I just like, hey, listen. You've done nothing with your life. You're a, like I went off on five people. Just <laughs> what they didn't have not done, and what I've done, and watching these people's faces turn white because they don't expect that coming from uh, right, Junior, yeah. right? Yeah, like, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. like, fuck that shit. We're yeah. all we're all gonna fight in here. We're all yeah, fighting. Yeah. You yeah. know, it's hard to not. Do I would that. say Sicilians love to watch you work and of tell you what you're doing. Yeah, wrong. they love to supervise some shit, dude. I would so back, all fired back up when it was like an empty lot. 
we would have to cut the grass, you know, on the, on the lot. You wouldn't want, you want your grass to get too high or you'd get a fine from the town. My father would want to come with me to watch me cut the grass. Uh, I'm standing, dude, uh, dude, it's a rectangle of grass. On. It's a uh. rectangle of grass. And I'm go- and he goes, oh, over there. Uh, <laughs> I'm like, you don't think I see the high grass? It's like, uh, I'm going back and forth. Peter, plug where you're at. Like, over, uh, over here. Right here, right here. You right wouldn't here. even say linen with two uh, <laughs> <laughs> Tell everyone where they can find you. <laughs> oh my god! I uh, I'm Peter Garacci. I'm on Instagram is the Garacci. I should probably make that an easier thing to find, but no, it's a, Peter Garacci is a is a movie star name. My father gave me that name, so I'm never gonna change it. So figure out how to spell it. Uh, I have a I had a podcast called Great Promo, bro. <laughs> <laughs> What the fuck are you? What's happening right now? <laughs> 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 you should be hey, finding this other guy. Hey, try following me. Fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, no one has tried that strategy yet. <laughs> Everyone's like, please follow me on social media. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I dare you to fucking follow me. Oh, you, you tagged me on Instagram? I didn't realize you were a fucking rat. <laughs> Uh, uh, joshacardo.com <laughs> at joshacardo uh, we have like 10 shows coming up in the next couple months here in the fall with the working class host tour so if we're near you take care of that yeah 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 please follow, follow me on Instagram at Comedy. go to edmcgowan.com to see my uh, city dates we got tour dates at, uh, up there we also uh, we got oh you want to send us fan gift you want to send us merch you want to send us something for the break room Good friend yeah, of mine. Yeah, we'll hang it up. Oh, wow. Send me a... Uh, Go Birds. Go Birds. Go Birds, baby. Go Birds, Big baby. Win. Yeah, Big yeah. Big win Sunday, Saquon. Sweet. For now, uh, I'm going to go Email there. us at workingclasscomedians at gmail.com. We'll see you guys again next week. You can listen to us on all major podcast platforms every Wednesday. You can follow us on Instagram at Working Class Holes. Also, make sure you watch the full show on YouTube. All you got to do is type in Working Class Holes. And please don't forget to rate us five stars and tell a friend. Come on. 